Hello and welcome to section 5.1. Uh, in this section we'll be discussing uh, factoring and kind of giving you an overall view of how factoring works, what it is, and then we'll work through a, uh, a couple types of, of factoring problems. Now this is our last chapter, chapter 5 is our last chapter, and so uh, we're getting down to the end here, so uh, make sure to uh, pull out your video notebook, we don't want to lose anybody here, make sure to pause and rewind the video if you get stuck on anything, we want to make sure that uh, you'll be successful here and uh, good to go. So let's get into it, factoring, that's the first step here, what is it? Now, uh, you might remember a while back, back in Chapter 1, at the beginning of Chapter 1, we actually stated what factoring was when we talked about the distribution rule. We said, hey, we can distribute things into the parentheses. So, uh, if I was to come up with a problem like this, we all knew that we could distribute. We could take this 5 and put it in, and that would get us 5x squared plus 15x plus 35. Again, that's using distribution. Now, the opposite of distribution, in other words, if we were given this and we went back to the original, that's the opposite of distribution and that is what is called factoring. So you, we need to remember that factoring is undistributing, undistributing, that's what factoring is all about. It's finding, it's going from a, a normal polynomial, a normal looking polynomial, to a polynomial with parentheses. When you have a polynomial with parentheses, that is factoring. So, take a look at this map. This map kind of is, this, uh, this is the map of factoring. This is going to be all of the rules we learn dur during the next two weeks. Uh, we're going to take it one step at a time here, um, but by the end of this chapter, you should be able to understand what the idea is of all factoring. Um, and so that's what we're going to uh, dive into and uh, get started. Let's go ahead and start talking about this first rule, which is the first thing you do, the first rule of factoring, is to factor out all of the common terms uh, in the mono monomials. Let's do. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so the first step of factoring is to pull out all the common stuff. That's the first thing we got to do. So when you do that, it's good to identify how many terms you have. In this problem here, I have three terms. We then want to look at each term and determine what the greatest common factor is. What's, what's the biggest number and the biggest amount of variables that we can pull out of this problem? And so I'm looking here and I've got an 8 x squared, I've got a 4x, and I've got a minus 12. So the common factor of 8, 4, and 12 would be 4. So my goal here is to take out at least a 4. Now, I also want to see if I can pull out any variables. Here we have an x squared, here we have an x, but here we don't have any x's. So in that situation, we cannot pull out any x's. We're only going to be pulling out a 4. So our common factor, uh, our GCF, our common factor is 4. Uh, to find what's left inside the parentheses, uh, again, this is undistributing, so in other words, when we distribute, we multiply. So when we factor, we divide. So we basically could divide each of these terms by the greatest common factor to find out what would be left over inside the parentheses. 8 divided by 4 is 2x squared, and 4x divided by 4 is just x, and 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. That's what we need to do for pulling out the greatest common factor. Let's take a look at another one. What if we had 3x to the fifth plus 6x to the fourth minus, oh, let's go with 12x cubed. This one's a little harder. Again, we have three terms, and I need to find the greatest common factor because that's what we're going to put outside the parentheses. Looks like I've got a 3 here, so 3, 6, 12. So 3 goes into all of those, so we're going to pull out a 3. And also, we're going to pull out, we've got x's in each one, so you'll always pull out the lowest number of, of x's that you find in the exponent. So here, uh, our lowest exponent is x cubed, and so that's what we'll pull out. This is our greatest common factor, the 3x cubed. And so, to find out what's left in the parentheses, I'm just going to divide each of these monomials by the greatest common factor. So I'm going to divide this by 3x cubed, and this by 3x cubed, and this by 3x cubed. So 3x cubed, let's see, 3x to the fifth divided by 3x cubed. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and x to the fifth divided by x cubed 
Uh, when we divide powers, we subtract the exponents, so we'd be left with x squared. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and I'd be left with x just to the 1. And then 3x cubed, the x cubes here cancel out, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. This is factoring. This would be our answer. If they told us to factor, we'd say, hey, this is our answer right here. <laughs> So, uh, let's go ahead and give you guys some practice with this first step. Remember, this is the first step of factoring. If you forget to do the first step of factoring, all of our future rules will fail. So please, 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 make sure that you're good here at this first step of factoring. Try these three problems here. Here they are. Go ahead and pause the video and press the play button when you're done factoring these problems. Again, pull out the common factor. Okay, how'd you do? Hopefully you did well. In this first one, we have three terms. I like to identify the terms. One term, two terms, three terms. And the greatest common factor here that goes into each of these is just a, it's just a two, it looks like. Uh, two goes into eight, two goes into two, and two goes into five. So if I divide each of these by their common factors, we'd be left with 4x squared plus x minus five. That's the answer for number one. All you can do is pull out, all you can pull out is a two. Here in number two, it looks like we have uh, a six that we can pull out along with an x. Again, if everything has an x, you can pull out the smallest power of that variable. So we're going to pull out a six x as our common factor. And if I divide each of the monomials from the original polynomial by six x, we get x squared minus, let's see, 18 divided by six is three. And the x's cancel out. So that's our answer for number two. And for number three, we have a trinomial, three terms. Looks like five goes into all of those. And x squared is our lowest power, since they all have x's. And so 15x squared divided by 5x squared is 15 divided by 5 is 3. And x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. Plus, if I divide this by 5x squared, we just get 2x, and then if I divide this by 5x squared, we get minus 1. And don't forget to put the minus 1. I see sometimes kind of some people say, oh, these just cancel out, I get 0. No, 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 no. They cancel out, and then you get 1. So uh, don't forget to put the minus 1 there. That's sometimes a little uh, tricky part of factoring. Again, you can check your answers. If you really wanted to, you could take some time and take your greatest common factors and distribute them right back in to make sure that you end up with the original question that you were given and in all three of these situations that would be true okay great let's move on to the next part of factoring okay so here's the map again that's uh, helping us uh, fill out all the rules here the first step of factoring is to take out all the common stuff factor out the common stuff step number two then is to count how many terms you have depending on how many terms uh, you have is the method that you're going to use when factoring. Now today, we're simply going to be working with four-term polynomials. We're going to be working on how to factor four-term polynomials, and uh, we do that by using grouping. And so uh, right now, we're not going to worry about these other two methods. Uh, we're going to start with four-term polynomials first. Some people will say, why do you want to start with four terms first? I, I just, it's really cool because it kind of is, is associated with rule number one. So uh, let me show you how to do four term polynomials and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here's an example of a four term polynomial. Again, it's got one, two, three, four. Remember, terms are always separated with addition or subtraction signs. And so the question is, how, well, how do we go about uh, factoring a four-term polynomial. Now, first of all, we could see if it's got any common terms, but it doesn't. Uh, it's got This one doesn't have an x, so we can't pull x's out, and these don't have five, so we can't pull any fives out. So there is no uh, step one factoring that's involved. Um, but we do have a four-term polynomial, and to do a four-term polynomial, the rule is to factor by grouping. Step number one, you cut it in half. That's our first rule. And so uh, what we do is always cut the problem right in half, right after the second term of the polynomial. Uh, the purpose of doing that then will allow us to um, factor each side, the left side and the right side. So step number two is to factor left 
and then factor right, as if they were their own separate problems. So over here, I'm going to factor just this left side. I only have two terms, and there's some common stuff. Uh, the x, it looks like we have an x cubed and an x squared, so we can pull out all of the powers, which is x squared. Doing that, if we pull the x squared out of this, so I'm pulling out an x squared. Now, again, if we're pulling out an x squared, we can actually divide each of these by the common factor. This is just the greatest common factor, just like what we just got done doing. So x cubed divided by x squared is x, and x, uh, 3x squared divided by x squared is just 3. So I divided the left side. I factored out the left side. Now let's factor out the right side. What is common here and here? The greatest common factor. It looks like it's just a 5. So if we divide these monomials by their fives, we get x plus 3. And I kind of forgot my plus sign here. This plus sign does stay there. OK, so that's step number one, or step number two, is to factor the left and factor the right as if they were their own separate problems. Now, when you do this, you're going to find something really unique. And this is step number three. Step number three is factor out the common parenthesis. Okay. Notice that in this problem we have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 inside uh, on both the left and the right. So this allows us, because it's there on the left and the right, it allows us to pull it out. We're going to pull this x plus 3 out. I pull out the x plus 3. Again, I pulled out the x plus 3 from here and from here and we factored it out. Now doing that, we then ask ourselves, what is left over? Well, if I take out the x plus 3, I need to still have what was here on the left and what was here on the right. Um, and so we pulled out the x plus 3, and from the left, we still have an x squared. So I write that in. Again, that came from right here. And from the right, we pulled out the x plus 3. It's now here, but we we still have a 5, and so we have a 5 from the right-hand side. So our final answer is x plus 3, x squared plus 5. And that is how you factor by grouping. Let's go ahead and do one more example of those so that you can uh, catch the idea of what's happening. OK, so let's take a look at this uh, next problem here. This is 2x cubed plus 8x squared plus 14x plus 56. Again, I'm going to start at the top of the map and work down. The first rule of factoring says that you got to take out all the common stuff. So I got to look at this problem and say, is there anything common in each of these terms? Ooh. Now the x's don't work because this last one doesn't have an x. But it does look like each one is divisible by 2. So the first step is to pull out a 2. I'm going to pull out a 2 and divide all of the monomials by 2. I get x cubed plus 4x squared plus 7x plus 28. That is the first rule of factoring. Don't forget, you've always got to do it. Next thing I do, count the number of terms in the polynomial. Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to factor this inside parentheses using factor by grouping method. So we're now over here, and we're going to follow these rules. So rule number one, cut the problem in half. So bust out your chainsaw. <laughs> And we cut right after the second term in the parenthesis. Okay? Uh, over here, we're going to ignore this outside 2 for right now. I'm just going to work on the inside. So I'm going to ask myself, what is common here and here? Well, it's x squared. And if I divide each of these by x squared, I'm left with x plus 4. Okay, good. And over here, now I'm going to factor the right. Again, step number one, cut it in half. Step number two, factor the left and factor the right. Uh, so I've got a 7x plus 28. I'm going to take out a 7 here. I divide each of these by 7, leaving me with x plus 4. Sweet! Step number three, factor out the common parenthesis. Now look, this parenthesis are the same, and so we pull them out. I'm going to pull out the x plus 4. That is my common parenthesis. And my leftover parenthesis is what was going to be on the left and the right. On the left, we had x squared. And on the right, we had 7. So this is our answer, except we don't want to forget that initial 2 that we pulled out. And so we write it down here, um, right in front of the parenthesis. And this, then, is our final answer. It's 2 times x plus 4 times x squared plus 7.
Okay, it's your turn to try some of these factor by groupings, these four-term polynomials. We're going to write up some and let you guys try. Okay, so here are two problems for you to try using factor by grouping. Go ahead and run through the steps of factoring and give it a try. Let's see how you do. Okay, let's take a look. First step is to see if there's any common stuff here. No common stuff on this first problem. It's just uh, nothing we can pull out. Uh, some people may have thought you could pull out a 2, but this first term doesn't have a 2, so can't do that. So let's go into factor by grouping. It's got four terms, so we cut it in half. Over here, we're going to pull out x squared. I'm left with x plus 6. Here I'm going to pull out a 2, leaving me with x plus 6. Notice those common parentheses. Those common parentheses are what we pull out, x plus 6, and then we're just going to write whatever was left over on the left and the right side. So it would have been an x squared and a 2. I forgot my plus sign there. And so there's my answer for that factoring by grouping question. Let's take a look at number 2. Factor out all the common stuff. Any common stuff here? Mm, nope. It's a four-term polynomial, so we're going to factor by grouping. We cut the problem right in half. Over here, we pull out x squared, leaving me with x plus 8. Here, I'm going to pull out a negative 3, leaving me with x plus 8. Again, we undistributed a negative, so these became positive inside. The parentheses are, not, are now common, so I get an x plus 8 when I pull those out. And then it's an x squared minus 3 was what was left over on the left and the right side. Okay, great. There's the first two. Let's do two more just to make sure we're all on the same page. Here are two more questions we'd like you to try. Make sure that you're understanding this uh, idea of factor by grouping. Go ahead and pause the video and do this question number three and number four. Okay, how'd you do? Hopefully you did well. Uh, let's start with number three here. I'm going to look to see if there's any common stuff. Any common stuff. I've got a 2, a 12, a 5, 30. No, doesn't look like there's anything common. So we're good to go ahead and just cut this problem in half. Over here, we're going to factor out the common stuff just with the left. That would be a 2x squared, leaving me with x plus 6. Over here, now on the right side, we're going to factor out the common stuff, which uh, 5 and 30 would be a 5, leave me with 5 plus 6. Sweet! The parentheses are the same, and so we factor those out, x plus 6, and then write in what's left over on our left and right side, 2x squared plus 5. I keep forgetting my plus sign, sorry about that. Okay, that's the answer to that problem here. Question number four. Ooh, question number four. I'm going to go ahead and apply the first rule of factoring, which is to take out all the common stuff. Notice how there's a two in each one of these problems. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Taking out the two, that leaves me with x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. We just don't want to do any problems uh, that in factoring unless we pull out the common stuff. Good, we pulled out the common stuff. Let's go ahead and chop the problem now. So, I chopped this side. I'm going to factor the left, which means I can take out an x squared. Ooh, this divided by x squared is x, and this divided by x squared is 1. And here, there's nothing to take out, uh, which is an interesting situation. And so we're just left with plus x plus 1. Okay, it may help to put another set of parentheses so we don't get confused about this 2 that's there. Okay, so I go ahead and factor out the common parenthesis, which is x plus 1, and then I write what was left over on the left, which is x squared, and I write what's over left over on the right. Now, we pull out an x plus 1, there's still something here, there's an implied 1 here, so we still write the 1. Don't forget that, some people kind of forget that 1. And uh, last of all, don't forget the 2 that we pulled out at the very beginning. And that's how we factor that one using factor by grouping. Okay, we got you some practice problems there. Again, the first step of factoring, pull out the common stuff. And then the next step is to count the terms. Um, we've only done four-term polynomials so far. So when you have a four-term polynomial, you cut it in half, factor the left, factor the right as if they were their own problems, and then factor out that common parenthesis and write uh, the other parenthesis of what's left over. Okay, nice work with this section. You can continue on to the, uh, the lesson. If you have questions, feel free to contact your teacher, a tutor. Um, we'd love to help. Thanks for watching.